everyone. Welcome to another fun-packed edition of... <laughs> what are you doing? Well, this show's all about annoying characters. Yeah? Yeah, and I thought it'd be funny if I was annoying. <laughs> well, don't be. All right. Misery guts. Oh, we'll just introduce a show. This episode is all about those characters that drove you insane. Either because they're annoyingly irritating, or just because they're complete rubbish. We welcome you to Wes and Larry's Top 10 Annoying Characters. I'm Wes. And I'm... Hey, hey, what are you doing? All right, all right. I'm Larry. And he's the other one. Wes. Wes. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's now time for... Wes and Larry's Top 10... Annoying Characters. Call it guilt, paranoia, whatever. But in the early 90s, marketing execs had a thing about brainwashing kids with environmental hip characters with attitude, such as Captain Planet and the Toxic Crusaders. When some bright spark noticed that video game characters like Sonic the Hedgehog with the latest cool things kids, Doug, they immediately jumped on the bandwagon and came up with our first annoying character. Awesome Possum, star of quite possibly the most stupid title for a game in history. Awesome Possum kicks Dr. Machino's butt. How awesome is that? Really awesome, huh? Huh? No, I'm afraid you're not. For a cool character, you have about as much environmental aura appeal as Al Gore did. Well, po possibly a bit more. But you're still crud. Of course, the game is nothing like Sonic, despite the fact you're constantly attacked by Dr. Machino's robotic minions, who, by the way, is nothing like Dr. Robotnik. There's also his spin attack, which is, of course, nothing like Sonic's. And as Awesome Possum is an environmental activist, he doesn't pick up rings like Sonic does. No, that would be copying. He just picks up empty cans and bottles and stuff. Good old Possum, save the environment one bit at a time. Of course, as all environmentalists know, the best way to save the environment is through the power of sarcasm. And doesn't this crudmonger know it? Will you just shut up? This character is a definition of irony. Tender made hundreds of thousands of copies of this freaking game out of plastic, the most anti-environmentally friendly product available. Add on top of that the hundreds of trees that must have been cut down for copyright infringing lawsuit paperwork, and you've got something so incredibly ironic that they'll have to create a new word for it. Orsoronic? Ors Orsoronic, yeah, that'll do. He's anything but awesome. Annoying possum, maybe, but definitely not awesome. Awesome possum is the highest placed person Thing is awesome in his name, and he's in our list at number 10. Now act like your namesake and play dead. Permanently. You're not so awesome. Got something that might interest you. What are you buying? Resident Evil 4 is an absolute classic, and one of, if not the, best Resident Evil game. It's not Leon Kennedy that we find annoying though. Oh no, we love Leon Kennedy. In a gaming sense, of course. But what we don't love are the horrible escort missions. They should be banned. Now, as the gamers with sense who bought the game know, your job in Resi 4, as Leon, is to rescue the president's daughter, Ashley Graham, from the clutches of a mysterious cult. Now, you might think we're a little harsh putting Ashley in the list, but we really do hate escort missions. And when one is included in a game as awesome as Resident Evil 4, it's just heartbreaking. We can't think of anyone that likes them. The only time that they've ever been bearable was in ICO, but that game's the exception. Let's be frank, escort missions are a pain in the backside, and in Resident Evil 4, it's no different. Ashley isn't any help whatsoever, and will just stand there while some zombies come at her. Does she try to defend herself? No, that would just be too smart. Instead, she just stands there like a complete simpleton waiting to be eaten. And she deserves it too. Go on, eat her. You tell her to wait, and she does what she's told, which is good, but seriously, will you just stand there whilst a slow-moving pack of zombies come towards you? Well, it depends if they're offering cake. To be honest, we just prefer to put her in the bin. And so we stink Ashley in at number nine. It might be the biggest selling PC series in history, but these people really drive me insane. Yeah, Wes really doesn't get on with them at all. I could probably moan about these sims all day long. I really wouldn't recommend that. We've only got 17 minutes of the show then. The fact of the matter is, whilst you're supposed to govern the lives of these sims, they can't do any of the basic human needs without your help. They can't even go to the toilet without you telling them to do it. 
And if you don't tell them to do it, they do their business on the floor. <laughs> I ain't cleaning that up. I'll get a house cleaner and they can do it. You really do need to cater for their every need. You'll see them complain that they are tired. Well, go to bed then. And of course, they like to bug the heck out of you. Sometimes they won't even go to work. The alarm goes off and your sim thinks it's funny not to bother getting up at all. Yeah, so you get a phone call saying that you're late again. And if you're late one more time, you're going to get sacked. Well, if this stupid sim bothered to wake up when I told them to, then they wouldn't have missed work. But they were too busy chatting up next door neighbour's wife then to bother to go to bed at a half decent time. Then your character starts chatting up the housemaid. Don't do that, you're paying them to clean the house. Time is money, Sim, especially when you can't be bothered to go to work. And they can't cook, so you get them to read some cookery books so they can learn. But then they're bored and they want some entertainment. So whilst their dinner cooks, you let them watch some TV. Then they sit there like a zombie while their house burns down. But they can't be bothered to get up and call the fire brigade because they're too busy watching Guru Larry's Retro Corner. So fine, I'll let your house burn down and I hope you get burned to death with it. Thing is, you still play the games, it's just so darn addictive, despite how annoying they are. They're often crazy too. I swear all the Sims characters I've ever had have turned insane. And it can be funny sometimes to get your character into a fight, often with your next door neighbour as he finds out you've been cheating with his wife for the past few years. Still, all you hear is that darn simless language, and it does my head in! Oh, stop it! Every single one of the Sims ever makes it in at number eight. What's, what's that? That's Simlish, thank you. You know, Wes, I'm not exactly a comic book buff, but when I last checked, to be considered a superhero, it usually involves having some sort of superhuman power, like being able to fly or shooting lasers out of your eyes and stuff. Having diabetes does not make you a superhero. Well, not according to the blonde-haired, lycra-wearing, grinning goit in our next position, Captain Novelin, the diabetic superhero. We're not making this up, it's completely genuine. You see, the mayor's been kidnapped by aliens to the top of Mount Way Up Var, and he's desperately running out of insulin. So rather than simply call the army for at least a competent superhero, Jack Thompson on telly there decides to hire the Lord of Blood Sugar Monitoring himself to casually walk all the way there. He's not on his own by all means. During levels you're handed helpful diabetic related advice from a Botox Joan Rivers and a Fat Will Smith. Enjoy your dinner, he says here. It sure seems like you did, didn't you, big boy? Here comes the men in fat. Look, they even show you how to shoot up in the game for flip's sake. Even Grand Theft Auto wouldn't dare do that. Oh, look, a question. Why is it important to test your BG before and after exercise? Oh, the answer must obviously be to fill up your logbook. What do you mean, bro? Also, if you ever sick enough to make a game about a diabetic superhero, what kind of enemies would you have? That's right, aliens shaped like donuts, cookies, whatever the heck that is, and giant bottles of cola. And on top of the fact this game cost 60 quid when it came out in 1992, and you've got quite possibly the most offensive product a diabetics ever created. I might as well stand in front of the camera drinking cola and eating custard creams laughing at diabetics, as they can't do that. Captain Oberlin could be a contender for several top tens. Useless superheroes or offensive propaganda. He's on our list for annoying characters and makes his anti-sugary mark at number seven. If you ever play any of the party-style Mario games, then there's always one character that no one wants to be. Yoshi. No, not Yoshi. I like Yoshi. Whilst Yoshi almost made the list, there is one character in the Mario series so bad, so annoying, so utterly pointless that he's just more deserving to be here. And thus we present to you our next contender, Waluigi. Waluigi has only ever appeared in Mario spin-offs and party games. There's a big reason for this. No one likes it. Waluigi is the evil alter ego of Luigi, in the same sort of way that Wario is Mario's evil alter ego. He's never really been properly introduced. In fact, no one really knows anything about him at all. Is he Wario's brother? No idea. Is he related to anyone in the Mario games? I, I really don't know. So he's some stalker who just happens to sneak his way in pretends to be one of the game? Yeah, sure. That'll be the one. One of the things that's always bugged me about Waluigi, right? He's got an inverted L on his hat and gloves. Just like how Wario's W is an inverted M. But an upside down L looks like a lowercase r. So surely he should be called Ruigi. Or Riri or something. And is he really supposed to be an evil version of Luigi? I mean, come on. 
He looks more like the love child of Dick Dastardly and Terry Thomas. <laughs> Waluigi is a character that bugs us because he's just so pointless. At least Wario's appeared in some cool games and is an amusing character in the Mario universe. Unfortunately, Waluigi doesn't appear in Super Smash Brothers, as we'd love to smash his face in. Still, he makes his way in at number six. Hello and welcome to the Asbury Questionarium. See if you can use your game brain to guess what happens next in this game of Assassin's Creed. Answer after the break. Thank <laughs> you. 